identifying translations, we're at 9.2a, which means we have two previous videos for Chapter 9 that you can find in the Geometry Playlist in the description. A translation is a transformation where all the points of a figure are moved the same distance in the same direction. So think of a translation as a slide. And a translation is an isometry. So the image of a translated figure is congruent to the pre-image. We discussed isometry in the previous videos. It's a transformation that doesn't change the shape or size of a figure. So this little penguin is in quadrant 2, and we can translate him to quadrant 1 by just sliding him like he's sliding on ice. If we've got a triangle in the coordinate plane, all we have to do is slide it to translate it. And we can slide it to any place on the coordinate plane, okay? We can identify translations by seeing if all the points move the same distance and direction. So if you look at this blue image compared to this, or figure compared to this pink one, look at E and E prime. Look at the distance between E and E prime. Then look at the distance between C and C prime. So no, this is not a translation. The points didn't move the same distance. If it were a translation, then C would have moved the same distance as E to E prime, see? And look, it looks like it's flipped, doesn't it? As if there was a line of reflection coming down the middle. So that's a reflection. Now look at triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And look at the distance between the points. So if we measure the distance between A and A prime and compare it to B and B prime and C and C prime, they're all the same distance, and they're all in the same direction. So yes, this is a translation. All the points have moved the same distance in the same direction. We can construct a translated figure by using tissue paper. The first thing we do is draw a figure and a translation vector. That's what that red arrow is. It's a translation vector. Then we take a piece of tissue paper and we place it over our drawing, and we trace it, and we trace the vector, okay? So we want it to be exactly the same, okay? So we trace the figure and the vector onto the tissue paper. Then what we're going to do is line up the head of the traced one, okay? So that would be the traced one. We're going to line up the head of the traced one with the tail of the original one. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our tissue paper with our traced figure on it, and we're going to line up the head of this translation vector with the tail of the original one. So it's going to be like that, and then we're going to trace the one underneath it. Okay, so we're going to have two of them, so it'll be like this, alright? So, we're actually tracing it a second time, but we're making it so that the tail of this vector matches the head of this vector, see? And we're going to get the two figures with the two vectors like this, as if the vector was one long conti continuous one, all right? So it's going to be like that. Now we draw a segment from each vertex of the pre-image to the corresponding vertex of the image. So we're going to draw a segment to each corresponding vertex, okay? And our construction should show that every segment connecting a point and its image is the same length. So it's going to be the same length as the translation vector. So if the translation vector is this long, then this segment between these two corresponding points is that long, and so is that one, and so is that one, see? And the segments are also parallel to the translation vector. See that? They're all parallel. So a translation is a transformation along a vector such that each segment joining a point and its image has the same length as the vector and is parallel to the vector. So they're going to be the same length and they're going to be parallel. See a little parallel mark on them? Okay. And we can draw translations by copying or drawing a figure and translation vector. So either come up with an original one, or you can copy it out, out of your homework or whatever, 
And then we draw a line parallel to the vector through each vertex of the figure. So if this is our red vector here, we're going to draw these orange lines parallel to it going through each of these vertices. See how it comes through each vertex? See? Then we measure the length of the vector, minus 10 centimeters long, and mark that distance on each parallel line from each vertex. So from this vertex, 10 centimeters would be right here. From this one, 10 centimeters would be right here. And from this one, 10 centimeters would be right here. Then we connect the images of the vertices, and we've made a translation. Okay? An isometry is a transformation that doesn't change the shape or size of a figure. We've spoken about this in every single video for Chapter 9 so far. So you have to remember, reflections, which are flips, translations, which are slides, and rotations, which are turns, are all isometries. Okay? The size and shape don't change. They don't get larger. They don't enlarge. They don't get smaller. They don't reduce. All right? Now, if you're really confused about the vectors, we did that at the end of Chapter 8 in 8.6a and b, and they're in the geometry playlist. And if you haven't seen them, you really should, because you're going to get confused if you don't, all right? So you're not real far behind. You just have a couple videos to watch to catch up, okay? Our next lesson is going to be drawing translations in the coordinate plane. I'm going to finish up Lesson 9.2 with transformations of functions. Then we're going to move on to Lesson 9.3, and talk about identifying rotations and drawing them at the coordinate plane. All right? So if you've got some tissue paper, you can try doing this. And I hope you tried doing the tissue paper for the reflection. It's good practice. All right? Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.